do za do 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 za prejveti because the banyan kore se oksima eka oksima umuntu oksima ka to appreciate um say um the first memory is that walking on the road because he was at Chambati at the time, but at a boarding school and uh, sorry, at a boys' school and I was at a girls' school. And meeting on the road is the first memory of meeting him, seeing him, knowing him. But uh, his mother was related to my mother, so he also remember he talks about the time he came to our home and uh, and then we didn't really meet for a long time no mama we were together at uh, 1950 she, the, uh, because her father died 1955 and uh, I, I took milk and uh, some st soda there to, to, the, to the funeral. Then, uh, then 19, I, I think they had been studying on, on the Kajara side where her father was working. Kajara, Rashamide, Bongera. So that's when I, I started seeing in 1958. Then, of course, that was the year I went to Mbara High School, the following year. Then they stayed. And then later on, I came to see her again in 1970. Uganda was very, very difficult. And really dark. Um, life was very difficult and very insecure. The country was very insecure. The people were insecure. And uh, it's about that time that uh, I, we, we left Uganda. And I lived with my cousin John Kazora and his family in Kenya for some time. Because people were getting lost and the uh, he has so and so has been killed, so and so has been taken away and you don't know where they are taken away and so life was very, very challenging. So um that's when I finally met my husband and got married and we had to move to Tanzania. So that's where our life as a family started. Now with Musebe. Why Tanzania? Why? Because that's where Yoru was living already and preparing to to fight the Amin's regime. <laughs> When Idi Amin came in 1971, uh, people, Ugandans, uh, as they always do, they gave him the benefit of doubt. 
unfortunately, Amin became the real nightmare that Uganda had never seen. He was the the army commander, uh, 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 and uh, and somebody who, uh, when we are told, was a very amiable fellow. He liked to play his accordion and to merry make, and on the surface, a very human person. But when he took power, any any threat to that power, whether perceived or real, was countered with violence, with killings, and so many Ugandans went into exile. And, uh, and the country really started spiraling downward. Because the Amin regime did not respect the rule of law, the you can say the judiciary was weakened. How? First, they did not take people to court. For them, it was summary justice. Secondly, the, the military created the military tribunals to try murder and prison outside the court system. They tried economic crimes tribunals to try economic crimes like smuggling, hoarding, and, uh, and overcharging. So, they, so the military tried to, what shall I say, work outside the judiciary. Thirdly, there was intimidation. Judges feared to take some decisions. Lawyers feared to represent people. It was terror. It was terror because, unfortunately, by the time Amin took over, uh, many of the key military leaders were from Acholi. And it became th the threat that the military regime feared most. And linked to that, anybody who could express himself also became a threat. And so while initially it was the key military people, Acholis and the Langis and, and, um, and other uh, 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 tribes in the military who were targeted, I mean later I realized that getting rid of those people was not enough. Even even those who were not in the military uh, did not embrace him the way he wanted, and he saw them as threats. And, and, and so running into exile was, was the safest thing that most Ugandans across, across, across the communities would do. I see, uh, I was here when Ben Rickland was killed. I was at, at the Nodomer Center. September 72, I was a senior lecturer at the Lorem Center when Kiwanika was killed. We were told, you know, the chief judge has been taken, seized and taken. Once they seize you, you know you are gone. And I witnessed the trial of Archbishop Rumo at Nairo Mansion. I, I, when Amin was making a statement, all heads of institution had to be there. If you are not there, you are killed. It, yes, because you don't support Amin. So we all went there. Witnessed, they were, they were trying uh, the womb. You know, you had guns, you, they were reading charges on him at Nairo. After that, I felt so sad. I just went home because they went inside there now to have a discussion about what, 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 what. The evening we heard that a, a woman had been killed, Oriem and uh, Oboth of Umbi. I was here in this country, 77. I was at El Lord Women's Center. The situation was so bad uh, that um, uh, even if you just kept quiet and lay, lay low, uh, it was no guarantee that you would see tomorrow. 
uh, especially the youth that time, if you had been to school, uh, the security service members thought uh, those who have been to school are looking down upon them, they are illiterate. And so a lot of young people either got badly mistreated or some even lost their lives uh, just because you share school ID. But you know you could teach at Makere without being paid? Yes. They were not, everybody had run out and so they said, you come, you say, come and help us to teach here. I told, I told uh, all these people I, I'm telling you about uh, King Fuzza, son, I told second year law. I was not paid money. There's, there's no money. Just come and help us. Please, we need, to, we need these lawyers to graduate. Le lecturers have all gone to exile. It's difficult. One day, one of my uncle was an officer in the army in Lubiri, called Okui Pita. A military vehicle came with troops inside. And this uncle was for leave. Around 10 in the morning, he saw a vehicle come in the compound. So he got up to receive the, these visitors. He said, ah, those are the people I work with. And we were taking tea. From nowhere, I had bullet. He was shot as he was going to receive them. You can imagine. Then I also got stuck on the chair. I got paralyzed. I could not run. And it is there the man fell down. It was a feeling. They ran and carried the body and threw in the car. I, me, I remain, I was, I remain on the chair with my child. They didn't even talk to me. And they drove off with the body. Up to today, we have not seen the body. I think that was my turning point to have a total dislike for the, of that regime. So our line was, let's unite the people. Because Amin is against all of you. He is a dictator. For you, you say you are, you are people of, of democracy, of votes. OK, let's now unite. Let's form a united front. But Obote was saying, no, because I'm supported by Nyerere, it should be UPC to uh, fight alone and impose itself on the Ugandans. See, but you are now recruiting the others for, for, for Amin. Because, because if you leave them out, they, they get worried about you. And that's how they, the, some of them were working with Amin, like Benichwanuk and others. Let them come. And we form a broad front, and, and we uh, saw Obote refuses that. That's how we said, OK, let, for us, let's form our own group for us. Uh, this group is formed, but we, our aim is to unite everybody. sure they knew us already because when we were coming I saw a, a push of four they, they were called 404 estate now this same vehicle overtook us and somebody like looked inside and continued but Martin said no they will not know us they would not know us we, because we had we had card we had false card uh, identity cards. When we when we came out, we stood there. Uh huh. That's where the this Kasumoro man, who was like a kakwa, I think, small, small and dark, uh, asked me, "Who are you?" So I said, "We are students." Then he said, who has got the key of the car? So I said, I'm the one with the key. Uh -huh. So that's what he, then he said, open the car. I, 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 I went as if I was going to 
opened the car, then I jumped over, over the fence. I made a fear anger, uh, anger rather than uh, and determination to to, to 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 defeat the enemy. I mean, had defeated us in '72. This was a mistake of some of our people, the the invasion. So this one was our own from NASA plan to start guerrilla fighting in 1973. Uh, if we had not had these mistakes, we had uh, some few guns, we were almost like 100 guns inside Uganda. We could have started with those. But these mistakes d d disorganized us. And, and when I went back in uh, 73, that's how I got uh, involved with, with Mama. Uh, and then, 74, I, I had to do some teaching in Moshi, but I was still coordinating. That's why I chose Moshi. Moshi was near Nairobi. You could go, I could go on the weekend to Nairobi, meet my people, go back. Uh, then 76, that's when we resumed. The Tanzanian government contacted me again uh, through Mr. Sokoine, the Minister of Defense and they said we could organize again. Then I created, I, I linked up with the new people, Mbabazi, Otafuire, other people. So by 75, we had revived our internal network. Uh, now this is the one I used in 76, when the, the chance came to recruit the 28, uh, party from here, party from Nairobi. I got a, a temporary teaching job in a primary school, uh, Itendero Muslim Primary School. Some of you might know it. It's on the highway between Mbarara to Rusheni Shaka. And uh, so term one, term two, holiday of term two is when I am approached uh, by um, the individuals that were working undercover for Fronasa, uh, and I got recruited. There was recruitment of uh, people against the government. And uh, I heard somebody called Yuel Museveni was training people in a Chile land, called, a place called Awere. When I was in, in Lira, and people were you, you, you going to join him, there are multiple recruitment. There are those who are going for Museven. Then there are some recruitment for Obote being done by some people. It was also, I think, a very, very well thought out decision on behalf of Fronasa to approach me. And uh, I think in the same way they approached the other 27 of my class. Uh, what are these young people's outlook towards life? Uh, what would they think if they were given such information? Would they run to report? Would they hold on to it and digest it? Uh, so finally, I think they debated and decided they could approach me. I approach one person who uh, happened to be the old one uh, is young. Then I approached him and said, eh, about fighting, I mean, what are you saying? See, for me, I'm over willing. If I get somebody who wants to fight this regime, I would join. Because me, I see no future. All my people in the north that are being killed. And now, the killing is even going all over Uganda now. At the beginning, he started with the Northern. It came to Buganda. It came to Angola. It came to the whole Uganda, even to West Nile people. The entry point of the recruiter was, are you enjoying what you are doing? Certainly, I said, of course not. Uh, why? 
Uh, I couldn't go further school. Why? Uh, there were no teachers. Why? Uh, they had either been killed or they had gone into exile. Why? Uh, the state, they had to run away from it, that means uh, government. Why? I mean, it has an army, has weapons, has... Uh, yeah, but we can change this status, this uh, state of affairs. Are you willing to join us? I say, but how do you do this? I say, well, we can bear arms and, and, and throw him out, like he's using arms uh, to destroy our country. And uh, I thought about it, and that's uh, how I was recruited. I accepted. After that, uh, a short while, I think it was a few weeks later, uh, I was uh, picked up by uh, uh, Mr. Karokora, my recruiter. I had another young man, uh, Richard Mugaba Mari. Uh, then he takes us out of Busheni, hands us over to Mr. Watafire in Ishaka. And then Mr. Tafiri brings us all the way into Kampala, hands us over to another colleague, I think it was James Doy. Uh, Mr. Doy takes us all the way uh, into Kenya, but we had split at the border. Some, uh, no, no, we had, now we had another group coming from northern and eastern Uganda. Uh, total maybe about eight, ten of us. So Mr. Doy had to uh, shepherd us across the border. And, uh, and at the border we had split, but we all uh, got information. Where the bus stops, we should wait there. Yeah, and uh, that is how we got into Kenya. Finally, everybody reassembled. And uh, yeah. I entered from Busia. From, uh, from Busia, Busi, I just cruised to find myself in Kenya. Like they told me after crossing Busia, you go and buy a cloth from Kenya. You know this cloth that we put on resembles the Kenti this Ugandan dressing. Can even lick you your own dressing before before even somebody. So he told me you change the cloth, then those ones you throw in a pillar train. I was not a pure rebel now. <laughs> and that time, I mean, was putting people firing squad. They are called gorillas, gorillas. So I was already gorilla. My action was subversion, try by death. So I, I knew the danger now. When we arrived in Nairobi, we are picked up by uh, somebody I didn't know and never met before. And this is the same person that uh, led us out of Nairobi into Tanzania, uh, whom I later got to know was Mr. Museveni. Then we reached Nairobi in the, the house. That's when I saw Muse. He came and said, now you people, we are freedom fighters. Um, you are Museveni. That time I was a prison. I'm your number seven. I'm your leader. I'm the political leader, and the military wing is you people. So you are the nuclear. Never did, never, never did they know. He had tried another group in Guru fail. He also tried fighting on seventy one. They got defeated in in Barara. So we, I think we are the third group. Because I had trained three groups with, with Frerimo before the 28th. There was, there, there were three. There was, there was a group of five who included Martin Mwesiga. There was a group of 14 who included Maumbe Mkwana, the husband of this, of this lady here, and, and Seguya. There was a group of 53 Bagisu boys who became indisciplined and Samora disbanded them. So this was the fourth. But the nuclear, this 28, had now created the new Fronasa, the bigger one, the one of, of the 9,000 now. So those who fell out were replaced by many more 
Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, the group, the 300 wh- whom were sent to Monduri during the transitional period. That's where the Tumwines were, uh, uh, Tessa Pecos, uh, Joram Mugume, uh, Kashaka Steven. Uh, they were part of that, not part of the 28, but part of the 9,000. By the time we are now assembling, uh, we are in, in Nairobi, I think even in Nairobi, we could not disclose our real identity. So we had taken an assumed name that uh, everybody around the group would know, not your real name. The reason being, in case one of us deserted, or in case one of us was an enemy agent, or even if he was not an enemy, but he deserted, and going back home, he says, I found Ivan Koreta, I found uh, Saleh, I found uh, Eri, I found o- o- Odongo. Then uh, the, 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 the repercussions were that the families of Koreta would all be rounded up, of course be badly tortured, and eventually be killed. So the names you, you get from my group, those are Jagon names. Then Saleh said, I'm Salim Saleh. Then Mure also then, oh, I'm Pepino. Um, the one who recruited called himself Zoyon. So we didn't know the actual name. So that's how we got the name. Ivan Coretta, Fred Rujema. Those are the names we gave to ourselves. And you? Me, I, care, I remain Bosco. Rangi. Mm. Rangi, Rangi is mid Majan. Because my father, the, my namesake, was called Omure Rangi. So I put myself Rangi Bosco. Yeah. So we moved. And when we got in, we waited a few more weeks. A few others were coming, two here, one there. And um, I think it must have been uh, middle of December or the sec- third week, second week, I think, or third week of December. Then we were uh, led across the river Ruvuma, the border with uh, Tanzania and Mozambique. And uh, we went on foot for several days and several nights and got picked up by truck and taken to Montepoeg military camp, which became our school. Uh, or for the time we were in Mozambique. When we reached Montepoe, Montepoe, that camp was formerly for commandos, for the, for the Portuguese. So, let Samora turn it to train his, his people and then he offered that camp to us, to Muse. I said, he was preparing us for a bigger thing. But gradual, because huh? we all came all from different backgrounds. But now it was uniting us. That's a proper leadership. To the point none of us want to escape. It was not telling us that you could, you failed to escape. No. So we find ourselves being more solid. Thank you.